All right. So I'm just going to delete this by pressing X, of course, delete. All right. Question for you guys. Think about what I said in the beginning. What basic shape is a shako? Cylinder. There we go. So I'm going to make a cylinder. Uh, I always use Shift A for the, uh, the add function because I can't be bothered to uh, to do click on buttons. Shift A cylinder. Now, uh, one of you guys mentioned high poly or low poly. This is too high poly. 32 uh, vertices. Uh, this is counting the amount of vertices that are on this face. It's too high. Uh, I know Lowman, Amazon Lowman uses like uh, 12. I always use about 18. I, I use 16 to 20. It doesn't matter exactly how many you use in terms of. Um, editability as long as like in between 12 and not more than 24 because I think 24 is way too much um, meshes do end up lagging out your games if you don't watch out so just kind of keep it keep it real I'm gonna use 20 reason being you can always divide it by four and that's why I think it's important if you don't use a number that you can divide by four then it's kind of hard to make mirrors uh, for the specific ones For the sides, you, uh, yeah, sure, Kello, I extend it. Uh, this automatically uh, gets into your screen as soon as you do Shift A and then you click it on an object. You just don't do anything else. I'm just going to do it again. If I do Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder, it automatically comes up here. Just don't click anything else and then don't move. Don't just immediately go into here edit the, and edit the appropriate uh, thing. Honestly, yeah, that's a good one. Let's, let's use that one as a reference. All right. Since I now selected the amount of uh, vertices I have in my top, which is basically the standard, standard way I do it, I'm going to move it up slightly. A reason being, I like to use Roblox characters as references. I don't use real people because uh, mid. The thing is, I already have these uh, assets pre-applied but the best the thing I have for example is if I go to my desktop folder Roblox I have a Roblox character already in my asset folder uh, I will upload the particular guy into this server If you want to follow along, there it is. All you need to do to get it added into your game is go to File, in the top left corner, Import, and then OBJ right here. And then go to the Downloads folder or something where you have it, and then just double click on the guy itself. This guy's already true to scale and true to location for the uh, Roblox map itself. Uh, the guy's in the center of the uh, axis in Roblox Studio. He will be also in the center of the map. So remember that. So let's continue. Right now, man is wearing a chef's hat. So let's change that into a shako. I'm going to be making it slightly bigger. Uh, because people wear funky hair. And some people even wear cat ears. I don't know why. Don't do that. That's cringe. Because it will poke out on the shako. Um, just kind of, I kind of put it around this edge here. Of course, still using the axis. Remember, axis. Don't leave the axis. Keep scaling and moving according to the axis. I'm just gonna put it here for a sec, uh, and then I'm gonna look at my reference real quick. And this is a 18 o. It looks to be an 1810 model, so I'm just going to be using the 1810 model sizes. Um, 
I know a video that has the sizes for each French Echo model, so I'm just going to be pulling that up. Uh, French. Let me see where it is. If you go to... Let me check. I think it was... Yeah, if you go to 3 minutes and 50 seconds, you'll find the uh, sizes in centimeters for each the three main Shaco models of the Napoleonic Wars. This is according to the... Uh, I actually have this book at home, so don't worry about the accuracy, it is actually true. Uh, but since this is an 1810 Shaco, I'm going to be following the 1810 sizes, which is... Here it is. Now, I want to get this image into Blender. How am I going to do that? I'm going to be making a screenshot. Uh, let me just use the screenshot program. I don't know what kind of screenshot program you guys have, but just kind of make a screenshot. And I'm going to save it as a PNG into my downloads folder. After that, close this. Close this. And I'm going to uh, go into Blender. And if I now go, if I press either 1, 3, or 7, depending on where you are, you'll change between the different axes. On, and this can only be done on your number pad, not on the numbers above your keyboard. So I'm going to be pressing 1, to get, or 3, to get the side view. I'm going to go into my folders. And I'm going to be grabbing the screenshot here. And holding it, I could just drag it in and release it. And there we go. That's how you drag references into Blender. Right, you guys got that? You can just drag it in. Uh, okay. You go into the folder, or the folder where you have your, your stuff, grab your, uh, your screenshot, and just go into Blender, and release. There we are. Got it, Floki? Alright, I'm going to be moving this one to the correct location, and then once I'm there, we now have a problem. Which is, of course, why is the, the shack is very big, and I don't know what scale to make it at. Well, it's quite easy. You just take the scale of the bottom, which is the head size, and I scale it down. And then I move it down onto the head. And I think that would be about the correct size. There we are. So now we have the correct, correct size for it. We can start... Uh, making it smaller. So I'm going to be pressing, going back into edit mode, selecting the vertices, and then I, once I get there, I just select one side, and I hold B, or just click B, and then you can just do this, boom, and it selects all the vertices in the top. Uh, I'm not going to be moving it down with the X's. You got to love the X's. I'm going to be going down on the Z axis because. That is, of course, up and down. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to scale it with S and make it about the size of the top, like this. There you are. You now have a um, reversed fez. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, you want to be doing the loop cuts. Why? It has the shack, of course, has the top uh, leather part and the bottom belt. You want to be making those. So go into edit mode again, and then remember to press Ctrl R to make loop cuts. Uh, I'm going to be making a single one, and I'm going to click with the left mouse button. And I'm just going to move it down right over here until I hit the belt. 
And now we have the, the belt basically down there. And then I'm going to make another loop cut, move it up. And I'm going to put it uh, about here. That should be good. Now you have, you can't, you, can, you can't see them yet, but they're there. What do you want to do now? You want to make the depth of the leather and the felt. So what I'm going to be doing is I will select the facings. And then I select one of these, the middle ones. And then I hold shift alt. And I click this. So I'm going to do that again. Pay attention. Click one side, hold shift alt, and then do this. And now you selected all of them. You can do this with any of the sides. If you do it like this, you select uh, the top one. And if you do it on the vertical, you select the horizontal. It's, it's quite weird, I know, but that's just kind of how it works. So now, if I go back into the... If I press number one again on my number, or number three again on my number pad, and I go into wireframe again, we now have selected the, the felt, but we want to make it we want to make it smaller. Why? To add depth, because right now it looks bland as fuck. So, I am going to press extrude. And extrude would be weird, because of, extrude is, of course, you grab something, you make it bigger, you, you, you pull it out. But, extrude can also be used in a negative form if you just move your cursor inwards. So, if I press E, click, we've now made... Uh, a single extrude and then I press E again and then I press S to scale I can move it inwards I'm gonna do that again I press E once and then I move it inwards slightly and then I leave it like that and as you can see You now have uh, a little bit of depth. Now, I don't like the, the angled in a way this is going inwards, so I'm just going to go into edit mode again, and I'm going to press S to scale, Z, and I just go up until about there. That looks good. You now have a Shaco without a visor. Yankee with no brim. Um, so, there's one more thing we forgot. And that is that the top of the shako is not flat. It is, uh, it goes inwards. Um, why they did that, I have no idea. I think it was to make it easier to manufacture, but it could also have been just to catch rainwater or something. Um, but it goes inwards with a weird slope. I'm going to be pulling up a Napoleonic shako <coughs> top view. Uh, that's a Pakistani-made one. I'm not going to use that. Look at that. Uh, let me see if I have an original somewhere. Hey, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Actually, I have some. I have one here. Here, we can see it better. It goes... It goes in with a bevel, a little bit of a smooth curve. Here you can see it again. It goes in over, and then it goes in again. So I'm going to be use doing that by doing a, uh, using extrude again. Because we're not going to extrude outwards, we're going to extrude inwards. So if I press E again, and I, just, and I press S, I'm going to make the edge. I'm going to make this little edge here by just doing this once and making this little edge. Now, you want to make the depth of the, uh, that's a Russian shako. You want to make the depth of the, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to call it, concave or whatever. So I'm going to do E again, and an S. I'm going to make it about this big. And then I'm going to press G to move, Z, and I'm going to just move it downwards. Until about there. That looks good. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, Eddie, I've I've kind of adopted certain things, I guess. Uh, I don't. I'm not the average professional modeler in that sense. Um, I personally don't always keep it just this plain. I like to add a little bit of detail, so I'm gonna do a. Uh, I'm gonna add a loop by pressing Ctrl R and then left clicking and right clicking again, so I can centralize the the loop cut. And if I then press G and Z, I can move it up a little bit, and there we are. And if I now select this, this one here, actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep that. Yeah, let, let's keep it. Now, currently, it looks like Lego, so let's make it look a bit better. What you can do is you can shade smooth it. Uh, this can be done by go to object and then pressing shade smooth, like this. Now it looks like um, I don't actually know what it looks like. It doesn't look very good. What I prefer to do most of the time, most of the time, is going to object and I'm pressing auto uh, shade auto smooth. And as you can see, it looks that looks more like it. However, the sh the edges are still a bit sharp for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do uh, lift click or select, go to this little bunch of triangles here. And if you go down to normals, you can see it says auto smooth has been selected. However, you can alter the amount of degrees you want it to be auto smooth over here. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to drag this up a little bit and see where I can take it to. I might have to do it a bit finer. There we are. That is what I want. So now we have a smooth looking top but still I have a nice edge around the leather to felt part over here. You could do lining if you wanted to. Normally, uh, realistically, Shackos had a... What's going on? Let me see. Let me smooth my angle. Uh, Ziles, I'll do it again. All right, so let me just kind of go Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. This is uh, this is how it's supposed to look when you're not we haven't smoothed it yet. So I'm gonna do it again. Go to Object, and then go down until you see the Shade Smooth, Shade Auto Smooth, and Shade Flat functions. If you don't have this, you might not have all the plugins, which are installed in Blender anyways. So if you don't have all the plugins, I recommend you to go to Preferences, Add-ons, and then if you do, I believe you can select, you can download all of them. Um, I used to do that, I used to have every single add-on, but I don't anymore. Hold up, let me find it. One sec, smooth, shade, auto. It's not, it should be in there. Who, uh, who was the person who didn't have shade smooth or who didn't have the uh, auto smooth function? I think it was banana. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zyles, then I recommend you to press to then don't do auto smooth. Just press shade smooth. Just do it like this. You do have auto smooth. Or shade smooth. Okay, good. And then uh, once you've done that, go to the little green triangle here and just press auto smooth. It should be there.
That is weird, man. What kind of version of Blender do you have? Four point one. I have four point oh. Maybe that's the difference. All right, uh, just try to follow along without the auto smooth, uh, then. But then I'll try to help you when I can. So I'm, uh, once we've done the smoothing part, I'm just gonna play with this a little bit until I get a nice look, like this. Now, the visor, which is arguably the hardest part for s most people I have seen thus far. How do you do visor? Um, I do it in a semi-easy way. I grab, I go to edit mode, and then I look at, <coughs> I look at which vertices occupy the visor. Now, in this case, you might argue that the last one here is also occupied by the visor. However, I don't like to use the entire half of the shack over that. So I'm going to be using only these vertices right here, I hold it, I help B, or I click B, and I select all of them, and that's it. Now, what would, uh, I want to extrude it. Again, I'm going to be, uh, extrude is like one of my most used functions at this point. I then extrude it downwards, and then press G, Y, or G, X, depending on which side, which side you're using, but I imagine you'll be using the same character as I am, and I'll just move the edge of the visor to the same edge on the picture, like this. Your visor should now look like this, which is of course not ideal. I'm going to be getting to, to that in a sec, because I'm almost, almost done with that. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to rotate the visor a little bit on the y-axis, or no, actually x-axis. I want to be rotating it up and down a little bit until it gets to a more smooth hook like this. That's already looking better. But of course we still have those weird tips. Now, the, how do you deal with those? You just kind of scale the mesh on the side until it gets to about that. Now you can see it should look much better. If you still have those weird angles, try to kind of manipulate it in a way until you're satisfied with. Just keep scaling it until you think like, well, that should be good. That should be good. Uh, Veniclus, scale the sides. You mean like doing this? Uh, you just press S. And then you press either Y or, or X. And then it should do that. <laughs> right. You now have your visor. The only problem is it's a, it's a, it doesn't have any depth. It's literally a 2D visor. Why is it 2D? Because it doesn't have any depth to it. It's just plain. So you want to be making this into a more uh, to a 3D object, or like not just a plane. So I select the visor, the entire visor, and then I press P. I don't know why they pressed, they made P separation, but they did. But P is separation. So if I press P, and I just click selection, I now have two different objects, the visor and the shako. If I now click the shako, and I go into modifiers again, Before I get into modifiers, I want to explain something because I can already see it coming. Why am I not using just. Why do I just extrude this? Here's why. If I extrude it. Uh, if, it if I extrude it while it was still part of the mesh. It would have done something weird and funky. Let me show you. At least this always happens to me. I don't know. Uh, if it doesn't happen to me now, don't worry. Don't, you, you probably know why it happens. This is what happens. 
it doesn't fill in the blank spaces. And it's because the data to the assigned mesh, it, because it's part of the main shako, it doesn't want to make more, it doesn't, fill, it doesn't fill in the space. So I just separate the object, and instead of doing it while it's on the shako, I just do it separately, and then I extrude it. E to extrude. And then just make it not too thick, like this. All right, and then I, as soon as I do that, I then click the M button to merge, because here's the, here's the catch. Once we separated these two mesh, uh, meshes from each other, they will have mesh, they will have vertices on the places where they connect it, but they will have them double because when you separate meshes, vertices don't necessarily get deleted. It's only uh, faces that get removed. Uh, so if I then press M to merge and I do by distance, you can see removed nine vertices. It removed the vertices on, that were on the edge here that were doubled because as soon as I separated them, they created two vertices on this on the spot. So now your mesh should be connected like this. And you now have a shako. 